Thank you for joining us, everyone. I'm Jay Murph with Crypto Rain, and today we're going to talk about the hottest DeFi project going on right now. And there are many people that are missing it, and it's because there's so much information, there's so many new things. Of course, you're going to miss this. That's why I wanted to bring it to everyone's attention because I was missing it till one of my viewers brought it to my attention, even though I've been big on the project overall. And that, that project is one chain. Now, there's some special things happening here that are introducing some efficiencies that we have all been waiting for. And just a lot of people aren't aware that those efficiencies are now there. So one of the great things that's really come about because of cryptocurrency is DeFi. However, all the DeFi right now is pretty much mostly tied to the Ethereum chain, which has some major congestion and some huge transaction fees. And unless you really, really up your gas fees, you're really going to have a long time for that transaction to confirm. So what's great is one of the projects has been around for a long time. They have their own chain and they have their development. They, I think they ICO'd right at the end of 2017. Maybe it was January 2018. They've been working on this. They had so much hype back then. They didn't allow us U.S. investors to buy, which I was really upset about. And, you know, it 10 x from its ICO, well, Crypto Winter was not friendly to it, just like it wasn't to anything. And it really hasn't hit since then. So let's look at what's going on in the charts. I always like to start off there. First of all, let's pull up Juan BTC. We'll look at that. Then we'll go back and talk about Bitcoin because... You know, on, on altcoins, you always got to look at what Bitcoin is doing and specifically Bitcoin dominance. But um, one chain way back after it ICO'd and then it came out where you could actually, you know, it got listed on some exchanges like Binance and others, I believe. And you could, it went all the way up to close to $10 in dollar value. This is the Satoshi value of it. Now, if you look at this, compared to where it is now, this is one one hundredth, almost one one hundredth of what the Satoshi value was. So you're getting it on a 99% discount in Satoshi values from what the high was during the last major altcoin run. What's cool is right here had a lot of promise. So right on this spot had a lot of promise back then, but it had no delivery because the project was so new. It just had a great team. A lot of community built, but it had no delivery yet. But right here is when we're at all the delivery. Not all of the delivery, but some major delivery things that, that are amazing. Now, what's cool about some of this stuff, as I've been researching it further over the weekend, is that this was built by community members. What I'm going to show you. And what I'm going to show you is pretty exciting. Now, what is OneChain? Many of you already know. Their, their promise was being able to have blockchains talk to blockchains. Now, I envisioned at the time that a lot of that would be commercial use from business to business, kind of blockchain to blockchain. It would happen a lot behind the scenes, kind of like oracles with Chainlink are done, and a lot of business to business deals and happen behind the scenes just to give us correct prices on things. I thought a lot of this, their stuff would happen behind the scenes. I didn't realize that their stuff would make it easy for some of their community members to build something as cool as what they have built. And the reason why this hasn't absolutely gone crazy is because there's no marketing dollars behind it. And that's the only reason, because the functionality is tremendous. So let's see where Wanchain's price is. Then we'll, if it's okay with you, we'll talk about where Bitcoin's price is and the Bitcoin dominance. And then we'll go into the DeFi that I'm talking about and why it's so cool and why I think it's going to do really well. So first of all, you know, its price has really bounced around and it's had a couple pop-ups. And I have been investing all the way since around here and just been buying more during the downtime. Thankfully, I sold some when it spiked up like this and then bought some more using everything that I had sold and just increased my position. And I've made little purchases along the way and I've made a bunch more recently because I'm very excited about where the price is. So it was on this descending channel here and then it's broken above it and used that as resistance. Now. 
going over to what's going on with Bitcoin. Bitcoin had this big breakout here and it's been bouncing off of this line as resistance. Now there's a chance it could break down below this and still float around here. If so, or even if it just continues sideways, likely altcoins are going to continue to run. However, if it bounces off of this and it jumps up to 45, 50,000, then probably most altcoins are going to do poorly relative to Bitcoin. So I always like to factor that in. Now, the reason I bought more and I still have some buy orders in on one chain, so I just recently bought some more today. Part of the reason is because some of what I had I threw, actually most of what I had I threw into the this DeFi um, to earn some awesome rewards. Um, so I bought some more this morning and I have a bunch of buy orders in all the way down here, you know, if it, it comes back down, because it might, we might have a Bitcoin run and then I can get some more one chain for cheap, which I would love. So I wanted to show you one swap. So the address for this is oneswap.finance. Um, a couple things. There's also a one mask. So if you like MetaMask and use MetaMask, well, they basically took the source code and made a one chain version of it called one mask. And it, it functions exactly like MetaMask works, which is great because they're able to leverage something we're all now familiar with, or all of us nerds are now familiar with. I say us nerds because really, you gotta be pretty technologically savvy to be getting MetaMask and sending stuff to MetaMask. It's something difficult enough grandma still isn't doing, just us early adopters in this technology are. So one mask is just like MetaMask and it's fantastic in its usage. Um, so you can come here to oneswap.finance. It will give you a link to be able to get uh, one mask and install it. So then you have to buy one chain and send one chain to fund your mask. Now I was reading about it earlier this morning and I, on their one chain 5.0 release, their big thing was being able to send like Ethereum directly into one chain and have it converted. I don't know if that functionality is done yet. And I'll tell you why that's important in a little bit. So for right now, I bought some one chain. I, I bought some on Qcoin. If you don't have a Qcoin login, you, you can on this channel. I have a Qcoin link down there. If you use that to sign up to account, you don't have to. But if you do, it really helps me out. Thank you if you do and supports the channel. But then you can buy some one chain through Qcoin and you can then fund your account. You can also use Binance to buy it if you're outside the United States. And I think even Binance.us has uh, one chain on it. So you have to buy some one chain and fund your account and you send it here. So once you send it here, so I have 4,700 one chain sitting here and I can swap it just like Uniswap. So if you look at the tokens that are here, um, you have FNX, which is natively on one mask, but then you have wrapped versions of Bitcoin, EOS, Ethereum, Link, Uniswap, USDC, USDT, and they even have their own wrapped WAN chain. That's pretty cool. Now this was developed by community members who basically took the Uniswap source code and they, they made it work for WAN chain in a way that we're used to using, which is what I love. So if you think of Uniswap, this is WAN swap. Now what's amazing with this is how cheap the transactions are and I will show you how cheap those are. So first let's figure out what it is we want to farm. So I'm looking here and right now they are returning WASP which is a token created specifically for OneSwap and it's a governance token and so right now they're returning really high rewards and as more people invest in this the rewards will go down because this is how much WASP this pool pays out per week and relative to the total amount deposited is where you get your APY. So right now I think WASP is trading at two and a half cents. Will that go up or down? I don't know. I think WASP is capped at, is it 220 million? And so over time the rewards will go down not only because more people will be mining but they'll actually be cutting the rewards and it will greatly slow down the closer they get to that cap and then 
it will be cut off. So right now the rewards are fantastic. And if you look at these, this shows where I have some staked in how much wasp I'm earning per week. Staked, farmed, I use those often interchangeably. So I'm thinking I'm going to put more into one BTC. I don't know um, if uh, BTC is gonna have its run up and one chain price comes down or if the reverse is true. I'm gonna put some in this pool here. So I'm gonna take you through the process of how that works. So first I need to get some one BTC. So let's go back to swap and let's select a token and we want one BTC and I'm going to say max here but I don't really want to do the max I want to do 2200 and so that's going to get me 0 0.026 one BTC I'm going to hit swap now I've already done this before so I didn't have the confirming step and still like Ethereum it charges a liquidity provider fee and so that's just you know what the people providing liquidity get which I think is at the same percentage of what Uniswap does however what is so different is this look at this so one chain is trading about 40 cents and the gas fee on this is like not even close to a penny like one one tenth of a penny and so I'm going to hit confirm pending just like what we're used to with Uniswap and bam done great so now I'm gonna come to farming I'm gonna go manage here and I am going to nope that is not what I'm going to do. I am going to add liquidity to one, one BTC. I'm go max here. Okay. All right, I'm going to supply. So this will give me 0.6% of the share of pool. I'm going to go ahead and supply it. Now it does make you confirm the first time you do this, but because I've done this before that step is gone. But like we saw before, the transaction fees are ridiculously low. So again, fraction of a penny. All right. And that confirmed already. Isn't that amazing? That's exciting to me. All right, so now I'm gonna manage here and I'm going to deposit and I'm gonna say max. Because I've already approved this before um, it, I don't have to do the approval step. I just have to do the deposit. Again, the fees so darn cheap. And there we go. All right, so Let's go to the pools again. So it automatically grabs, uh, let's go farming here. And so we can just get an update here on how much wasp is being returned per week. And I probably did some, no, that's right. Okay, it did increase. All right, so per week between one BTC and one ETH, I'm in those pools, and I did put a little bit in this. As I get some more WASP rewards, I'm just gonna throw it in here. Um, so the APY is more people invest in this and supply liquidity, right? It's, it's going to 
decrease this APY because this is just a function of the total deposit and this rate. So as more total deposit gets in there, the rewards will come down and that's okay. Like that's great because more people will be using this. But the greatest DeFi project we haven't been paying attention to, these liquidity fees are phenomenal. Like, not liquidity fees, but the fees of, um, the transaction fees are absolutely incredible. And what we've been looking for, I haven't been too involved in DeFi. Number one, the complexity is high. I figured out how to do it. Um, but then, you know, I just, I hate it when I go to, confirm a transaction and it's $30 in transaction fees. And I'm just like, man, it's going to take two or three days at least just to make that back if it even does. And so I love that some of the OneChain community have created OneSwap because this is the hottest thing going. Now, a lot of people don't know it because I've been a fan of OneChain and if I hadn't even heard of it, then I imagine literally... Um, hundreds of millions of the crypto community have not heard of it yet, which is great because now then is a great time to be getting fantastic rewards. And as more people hear about it, well, then naturally these WASP rewards will go down, but that's okay too, because the community itself will be growing. So now I did a video on just yesterday on why one chain, in my opinion, is going to 400 X. Now, there's some better news to that. Um, 400X, in my opinion, in Bitcoin price. So what does that really mean comparative to the US dollar? Well, <laughs> that could mean an 8,000X. Here's why. So at the all-time high when it was just a promise and a prayer, it was, it's now one one hundredth of what it was then. So if it 100X, it would get to the same price in Bitcoin relative to this. Now, is Bitcoin going to be worth more in the future than what it was in May of 2018? In fact, in May of 2018, let's just look at what the price of Bitcoin was. And let's do some math here. Okay, so May of 2018 is what we want to look at. And the price was, ding, 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 9000 so the price right now is three times that. Let's say the price goes up to 200,000 at the height or the peak of this market. And eh, let's, let's even be more conservative, 100,000. So if it 400 X is in Bitcoin price, let's go here. Then you times that by what the Bitcoin price was then, which was 10 X from there. That literally is, uh, so, why would it 400x? So if it was 100, it's 100x to get to here. I think because now the project's in working and doing some of its magic, but only some of it. This is just some side things that some of the community members have built using the technology. So you realize that the team itself has other things that they're doing too, which will be on top of this. So when it's actually hitting its full delivery value and people have realized, I think it's pretty reasonable that it will come back to its original price versus Bitcoin and then my guess is maybe even four times higher. That's how the 400X makes sense to me. Then if Bitcoin price is 10X from what it was at this point, wouldn't it make sense that then overall we're looking at a 4,000X? Now, will this happen? I don't know. There's a lot of competition in the space. In fact, I'm kind of a... I'm a huge contrarian, so I don't chase after what everybody is doing. I did a little bit of farming on Ethereum, just a little bit, because I missed that boat. That boat was a great boat to get into in like May of this year, and it was fantastic time to be really jumping into that boat. Now it's kind of missed, and you have all these dot finance projects coming out, but they're all built on Ethereum, and all they are is different copies of the same thing. This has gone a whole different direction and spawned a whole new direction where instead of paying such high Ethereum fees that all of these are subject to, now you can pay really small transaction fees. And so really I think this is the hottest thing going in DeFi right now. And the only reason that it hasn't absolutely skyrocketed is because I, I'm a one-chain investor. I have been for three years. I didn't even know about this till a week ago. 
it's just under the radar. But isn't that the time? Isn't that like getting into DeFi on the Ethereum chain in like May? I don't know. We'll find out, right? In three months, we'll know. Wow. Jared is wrong. This never really caught in. Or Jay Murph was right and, well, never really caught on. And J, Or Jay Murph was right and this is absolutely going crazy. And we have made huge amount of money. And then everyone's like, oh, Jay Murph is like the smartest. You got to tune into the Crypto Rain channel. So um, I will make an ask of you guys, which is subscribe to the channel. And here's why. If you subscribe and you like the channel, liking helps the algorithm grow out to other people. If you subscribe to it, what I really want is to be able to reach out to people like the OneChain team and have them come on and talk to everyone. And so the reason I started a channel is I was tired of not having enough clout to reach out to the CEOs and the project management teams directly and being able to come and have a video conference with them to ask them my questions directly. So I realized in really in order to make that happen, I need to create a channel and get enough subscribers, provide some content to you on what my thoughts are so that you like what you're seeing and learning. But as I grow a channel, I can reach out to these guys directly because I want to ask them the hard questions, the tough questions, so that I can do even better research. And so if you help me, I appreciate it so much because I want to be able to reach out to them, say, hey, I've got 5,000 subscribers or 10,000 subscribers or 200,000 subscribers and I want to talk about your project and I'm gonna ask you some tough questions, you know, so come prepared. That's what I'd really like to do because wouldn't it be amazing if I could get the CEO of OneChain on here and I could ask him all kinds of questions and you all would get that information firsthand on the channel that's really what I'm looking for. So if you subscribe to the channel, it helps me get there. If you like it, it helps me get more subscribers because it puts this in front of more people. So thanks so much for joining me on this journey. Let's make this year really good because I have a feeling it's going to rain really hard, really good for all of us. Thanks so much.